What up y'all and welcome back to the Fit Man Cook Kitchen and today we have cop or not. This video is inspired by a question I got from a follower when they saw me making the chicken smash burgers and I posted one here on YouTube and then I posted another one on Instagram and I was using a meat grinder on Instagram and here on YouTube I was using the food processor and someone wanted to know what's the difference between the two? Can't you just use a food processor? Why do you have to put everything into your meat grinder? Today we're going to be breaking down the the pros and cons of a food processor versus a meat grinder. And then we'll do a quick experiment, a little test to show you the differences between using the two whenever you're trying to grind up some meat. Let's just talk about the size of both a food processor and a meat grinder. Now traditionally, meat grinders are these really large commercial machines, but they have become a lot more popular for home use, been truncated down to various sizes. This is why I purchased this one because it is a counter and space saver. It has a suction cup here and all of a sudden it will not move kind of like that chick that put that gorilla glue on her hair it won't move it don't move you hear what i'm telling you it don't move it worked you understand it won't move it won't move many people have a kitchen aid stand mixer and you can actually buy the attachment for it and all of a sudden you turn your stand mixer into a meat grinder on the flip side, you have your food processors. Now these are technically a little bit more compact. This one is a really big one. I've had this food processor for about six to seven years now. It's very versatile. We're gonna get into some of the advantages of using it once we begin to compare it for meat grinding and other type of grinding purposes. And that being said, let's move into what you can do with these things and the different types of components that come with it. Here is your traditional meat grinder. These discs right here are actually called dies. You unscrew this back piece. This is your blade. So as the meat comes through on the outside, this is when it's cut up and chopped up. What is unique about having a meat grinder is that all of your meat is gonna come out to roughly the same size. The other thing that I wanna point out here is that this is heavy duty. This is all metal. The other reason why this part is metal is that whenever you're processing meat and you're grinding up meat, just the process itself, movement, oftentimes creates heat. One thing that people do whenever they're making sausages or ground meat, they'll actually freeze this part. They'll actually freeze the actual machine and the parts inside so that way it keeps the meat cool during this process. You mitigate that risk way, way, way less whenever you're doing meat grinding. Even though this is pretty easy to break down, there are several parts here. You have to make sure that you keep everything together. They have this bowl sits on top so as you're feeding the meat in or the ingredients in you're turning it and this just helps just to push things down the same way that you would with a juicer this would work with the exact same way whenever you're using your stand mixer this one has a lot of different goodies in here from a compact standpoint i think this is the way to go i really love this because it's just out of the way from a cost perspective the, these manual ones are substantially cheaper let's see how fast if i can if we can time me put this together like a NASCAR driver. Go! Boom. Boom. Did it in 30 seconds. Now with the food processor, this pretty much kind of sums up what I'm about to say. Look at all these different attachments <laughs> that, that can come with it. I love also that there is a dough blade as well. The other really cool thing here is that on top of this, these are different blades. You can hold up like a zucchini or something, and it'll julienne it, it'll slice it. Now, when it comes to the purposes of this video of meat grinding, one thing that I wanna point out is how a food processor works. Whenever you put something in here, the blade, it just spins around and it spins, spins, spins the entire time. You run the risk of overworking that meat and it becomes really gummy and pasty. The meat grinder, everything is the same size. You can push it through and you can see that. With this one, you may have big chunks someplace else, so you've got to keep on processing it until everything is minced up, which is how you get to the gummy pasty texture sometimes. And one last thing that I'll say about the benefits of a food processor is cleanup. You have this part and this part. And technically this part too, but for the most part, it's just this part that you have to clean up. With that, let's do some experiments. This is some chicken breast and some chicken thighs mixed together. I've chopped them up into smaller pieces to process. And we're gonna pulse blend this. And as you can see, I want you to get closer to this, Jesse. The, the tendons there pulling right there, kind of stretching it out. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty much minced now. 
that took what less than 30 seconds but this one's going to take a little bit more elbow grease add this in and we put it onto the fine mesh strainer so that way it kind of mimic what it would look like with the food processor okay so let's look at the texture and how they stack up to one another so this one is the food processing one. Looks like mince. Almost looks like it's been like finely diced up with a knife. You can see there's not a lot of uniformity in it. It almost looks like the like the little pieces are like individually torn. Let's look over here. The one, one's a meat grinder. This looks like it's been professionally done. Everything is really uniform. Look at that. Yes, it's sticky, but not in the same way. And it rolls off my the gloves here. Whereas this one doesn't really roll off. It just kind of sticks. Let's cook this up and see what it looks like in terms of texture. I'm gonna put black sesame seeds on the meat grinder. Food processor one is naked, meat grinder one has the black sesame seeds. Let's pop this into the air fryer. We've got the meatballs here, been made so, again, these are the ones that we made with the meat grinder and these are the ones that we made with the food processor. Food processor, pretty tough. You see this one, this is the meat grinder. Let's just, this one actually broke open a lot easier. This one look a little bit more dry to you. This looks like it's shredded chicken right here on the inside of it. So the biggest difference I can tell right now is that when I bit into this one, it almost looks like it was kind of like pulverized inside my mouth. Like there are tons of different little pieces and chunks everywhere. Um, this right here, this one, stays much more intact as I'm eating it. You can tell this is evenly cooked. It's the same exact texture all the way through. And that's why I thought this one upon first glance is like, it looks like it's dried out, but no, the whole thing is just cooked evenly all the way through. There's different degrees of doneness here just because of the way, and that's probably the reason why I feel like it's pulverized inside my mouth. Like once you put it in, there's just like psst, kind of pieces go, go everywhere. Some pieces are more moist, some pieces are a little bit more dry. Should you get a meat grinder, a cop or not? I say if the budget is with it, absolutely. If you could pick one or the other, definitely choose that food processor. You're gonna be able to do way, way, way more with it. It's a way more versatile piece um, in the kitchen. And I think the differences are pretty minute in terms of meat grinding and the food processor. Um, just the main thing is just don't overcook it, don't overmix it, pulse blend it and use a frozen, and, and use frozen meat so that way you can get as close to that uniform size as possible. If you got something to spare, meat grinder it is. If you like this type of video, I want you to comment below. Also give it a huge thumbs up if it's really helpful for you. I'm also gonna post below the links to these products because they are ones that I um, have tried and they are true and they are really good. So if you're looking to make that investment, be sure that you have joined the community and that you have subscribed and remember you gotta ring that bell so you can know when we're posting hot new content. And don't forget about our At The Table podcast. You can catch up on all the episodes right here on this channel or wherever you choose to get your podcast. Just search at the table. Until next time, keep it healthful, but of course, never ever boring. Boom! Bye peeps.